You ready? We are live. Oh, oh my god, the, I got a pimple on my forehead and it's like bad. Oh my goodness. Um, is that really how we're starting the podcast? Yeah, man. Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. Um, I am your host, Best Spot Kids Move, and uh, there's the co-host, ILP Gaming Addict. Man, that was the most simplistic intro you gave me so far. He's like, co-host gave me Addict. What's that? What? Oh man, you, you know, you know, it's funny. Um, last week I know I read some of the comments, and then I stopped because I realized the comments, like the way it was leaning, like after like a couple hours, <laughs> so I stayed away from the comments the rest of the week. I was like, nah. Look, it, last people last, didn't like people was, didn't like my Ubisoft the Ubisoft take. take. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um. I'm surprised you and the teammate in Germany, man. <laughs> nah. Uh, I'd go to Japan, not Germany. Oh, shout out to everybody that's at Gamescom. Um, what have you been playing? I'm playing Kina. <clears throat> okay. Same here. I started... Uh, I started I that... Chronicles, 100 Hero War. I've been playing that again. Okay. <clears throat> Is that the turn-based one or is that the action one? Um, that's the turn-based one. Okay. The action one was the other one. Yeah. I I got into it, but the, like with the action one when it came out, but I just like I got I forgot where I got stuck. I don't know if it was a combat sequence or just uh just where to go. Um. But I've been playing. I started Kana. I'm, I'm gonna try to complete that game through stream, and I'm playing on a master difficulty. So I gotta rename a stream so people know that it's on the hardest difficulty. Um, and um, I'm also uh, I just finished Mafia Definitive Edition um, on Game Pass. That was really good. Um, I en- enjoyed that a lot. Um, it was it was a game that you no. Know, the thing about Moth- Mafia, right? I didn't play it when it originally came out in a 360. Um, it's one of those games where there's no like downtime. It just it just goes. It just you you complete one mission, it goes flows right into the next mission. So you don't even you even have like the flexibility really to just free roam. Because usually in, in most open world games, right? You know, you do a mission when not after that's done, you're just kind of like free to roam out and get lost, and you kind of have to like, you know, find your way to the next mission or or, or to choose which next mission you're gonna do. This one is literally straight to back to back to back to back. So it's like you kind of have to play through the game and then do your free roam stuff after you beat the game or like in between like missions. But between the story. In the gameplay, um, I just thoroughly enjoyed uh, that game. So that's another one added to the list. Shout out to Game Pass for dropping the gym on them. I know uh, Mafia, the definitive edition, it's, it, I think it's on sale for like 10 bucks. So I could go and, uh, and actually actually buy the bad boy. Um, mm-hmm. But I might actually, I didn't realize, I played through like 75% of the game and didn't realize, oh, damn, I could have played this on like PC. So I downloaded on PC. It has separate achievements, so I actually might play through it again on PC so I could play it at 60 FPS because they never enhance the Mafia Definitive Edition uh, on the Gen 9 consoles. So uh, the, they were optimized for Xbox One X and PS4 Pro, but not for uh, Series X and, 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 and PS5. So we're playing you know, at 1440p, 30 FPS, but... I will say on the you know Series X, I did not have a single you know frame rate drop or issue. I shouldn't, but um, you know, it would have been nice at 60, so I'm gonna play it again at 60. Um I've you got me back into Dead Rising. Um I read that I've I've actually bought Dead Rising one. Um the Yeah, I saw that. You bought the original one. Yeah. Right when the remake, that I mean, it's that, another that's... month coming out, so I was like, Hey, maybe if I play it right, uh, and did I'll you have... play it? Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I obviously won't. didn't beat it. I played, um, I just I got through how much, how much did it cost it, you to buy that? Nothing because I, I use my rewards, 
<clears throat> okay, how much rewards? Are I had you ten dollars. I had ten dollars on. So me. you spent on ten dollars something that you could have easily put on the remake to play. Well, I I don't intend on paying for a remake either. I feel you. So yeah, good hopefully th we can get a review code from Capcom. So. Yeah. So um, the thing is though, how far I got. You know how they they break down. I know in Dead Rising, you know, three and four it is different, but in Dead Rising one and two, you know how they break down, I guess, chapters into cases, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I got through um of the first four lines of the cases. I'm at I'm in the middle of the in Dead Rising one. I'm in a courtyard with these dudes on a machine gun. I still don't know how I'm gonna get past that because they're they're I don't know what they expect you to do with. Uh, there's like three dudes inside like a like a jeep and they have like a gunner on the back of it like I don't know what to, I don't really know what to do there but that's when I turned it off so I was yeah, like I, I'm actually you know I'm playing um, Wukong tonight you have it? so I'm gonna st stream that for a couple hours yeah mm -hmm. I have it on Playstation um right. no I IOP bought it I didn't I'm not under some crazy embargo. Which, you know, do you want to talk about that? That embargo? Yeah, please, please, please. Yeah, so apparently... Get started. Know, I'm going to go uh, grab my tea. Get started. Yeah, so apparently the embargo for Wukong has, like, some uh, some crazy, like, unnormal criteria to you doing stuff. And, for instance, you know, if I look at it, because I'm going to bring it up real quick, so, uh, you know... I can see it full for firsthand, but one of the here here's the criteria, guys. Okay, so the dudes is enjoy the game, so you know you definitely want to make sure we enjoy the game. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Don't do not insult or influence. Uh, do not insult other influencers or players. I think that's pretty fair. Uh, do not use any offensive languages or humors. Okay, I, I I don't know if they mean don't cuss or they're meaning don't like like use like slurs and you know don't don't be racist. I, I'm kind of curious on that, or maybe it's just a variety of both. Then you got do not include politics, violence, nudity, venomous, uh, uh, propaganda, fetishization, and other content that in this. It, that indica uh, inst investigates negative discourse. Uh, so, um, and then do not use trigger words such as quarantine or ice, uh, isolation or uh, COVID-19, yep. which is interesting in, in itself because, you know, ever since the quarantine ended, the only time I would say, and maybe you can uh, elaborate on this mood, that I would talk about that is like trying to like, figure out why like maybe a game uh feature is not working correctly you know maybe the pandemic hurt the, the development nah, process it's a none of that, dude. remember but, we... no, but my point is is like that's the only thing i could think of to use it yeah. like so I, i'm kind of curious why they even put that in here because do not uh, discourse content related to china's game industry politics opinions news etc so what, what do you think about these uh, are these developers from china yes then there you have it <laughs> that's there do you have an issue with it um no only because one because i'm not under review embargo and whatnot but i can understand uh why because they are they are a chinese developer they're under a are is it china, china communist a communist country yeah well paul tassie's the one that posted that and he verified that there was people in the media and stuff getting it so yeah here's my thing Look, is the China thing a little bit like eyebrow raising? Just a little bit. I, I think that is too. It's like, look, like we understand, you know, them being from China mm -hmm. uh, may feel like America attacks them just for being, you know, in China. So I can understand on their perspective, it's like, look, you know, please just review our game off of being a game and not off the devs that made the game. Uh, if that is their intent, then I'm a little bit more okay with it. Mm -hmm. As far as everything else, uh, I can't get mad. I am always on here telling people to review a game on its own merits. You know what I'm saying? And to me, it's mad contradictory if I'm like, oh, but, you know, uh, don't don't review it also on its merits. Like, this is the, one of the first developers that's like, we don't want you talking about why there ain't no women in, in, in this game. 
We don't want you talking about anything racial in this game. We want this game to be reviewed off just it being a game. And, and, and to a point, I, I, I vibe with that, man. It's like, I feel like people bring politics, especially politics, in the game so much. It's it's a nice, refreshing thing when a, a developer is just like, uh, review our game on its own merits and stop using this for your own agenda. Yeah. Um, because game today's journalism, gaming and journalism, it's overly convoluted. The talking points are, are negative, and it's about everything but the game itself. It's about people getting mad about who you have to play as or who's in the game, what's in the game. or uh, It's usually everything outside of the the game itself. And um, But as far as them, I mean, ha- the, it, it's a weird uh, list of embargoes uh, to have, but it makes – it, 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 it makes sense considering where they're from, what it's coming from, and whatnot. Um, I'm more so curious about the console ports. Um, like the reviews available, but it's they only had PC reviews available, um, and, and and that's it, right? PlayStation. Uh, no one has seen the. I haven't seen a lick of the console version. I think DF found one out of China IGN. But the quality was bad, and they don't know if that was based off the YouTube upload or whatever, or if it's the actual game. But um, I'm curious to see everybody, because everybody's blindly buying this game based off what people played on the PC, and the PC experience isn't all that optimal as well. So I'm curious about the PlayStation 5, and then that might tell us why this thing couldn't launch yeah, on Xbox. Yeah, I think Xbox. if you want to criticize a game, criticize it for that. Yeah. You know, why are you releasing... Uh, no PlayStation review copies. Like, these are practices that it, I wish media and people would just be like, oh, so it, even if they just wanted a PC version, the moment they found out there's mm-hmm. no X, uh, PlayStation version, okay, we're not covering this day one. Yeah. We're covering this when everything else comes out. I, I, I wish more companies would do that because, you know, people like me and you could do that. But let's be honest, it's not going to it's not gonna matter. Like, me and you, like, oh, we ain't covering this. It's not... It has to be the one percenters, the the people that drive the majority of the traffic. It's like we're not standing for this type of practices anymore. And if you yeah. do it, we won't cover your game. Yeah, I mean, we're not big enough to you know to set those standards. Not even close. Not so, even close. Um, it, it, it is. It would be up to companies like IGN or or you know, big big influencers like big 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 streamers yeah they would have to do that and i'm talking about people that got like 30 40 000 uh, live viewers like mm-hmm. these are the people that bring so much traffic so much revenue that the the ideal that these companies not only wouldn't cover the game but speak mm-hmm. out against the game in the bad practices these companies would stop doing this v- really quick yeah yeah man um but We'll see what happens um, in regards to Wukong and whatnot. Um, the, like I said, the reviews seem, you know what I mean? It's, I, I feel like the reviews from what I'm hearing, they sound very careful. Did you watch any of the reviews? Not really. I've been trying to stay away from it. Because originally I wasn't going to even play this game. Yeah. But, you know, being a streamer now, I've realized that there's a little, like, I have to, like, judge off games coming out that I feel like I could actually captivate, you know, good content with. Mm-hmm. I've always had an audience that yeah. does that likes, like, the Souls-like games. And I understand mm-hmm. people say this isn't a Souls-like game, and that's fine. You could say that. Yeah. It The infrastructure is Souls-like games. So... A lot of souls like people are gonna play this game, uh, so that's my biggest thing on it. It's like just because it's not, you know, one for one a souls type game doesn't mean it has heavenly inspired aspects from souls type mm-hmm. games. Yeah. <clears throat> well, well, we'll 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 just have to see. Wu Kong, like you know what I mean? I, I held a grudge against it because it, you know, clearly it didn't want to um, come out on Xbox. But we'll see what happens on PlayStation. Let me know how it is. Um, how does game is, does game share share? You have a different game share partner, don't you? On PlayStation. Yeah, I share a digital library cog on PlayStation. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. 
Fair. You, you, you have no idea, man. <laughs> the, the, I've had some some people that get every game offer to share your digital library with me on a uh, on Xbox, and I'm like, I can't do that to Smooth because you know a lot of people don't know it, but there's a you know IOP wasn't getting every game almost under the sun uh, with review codes and. I really couldn't afford it. I mean, I still can't, but I don't have to pay for them. And Smooth was buying every game. <laughs> for, for like three years, Smooth was buying every game. And now, so, uh, now everybody wants to get mad that I'm, 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 that I'm going through Game Pass now. Now you everybody, don't have to, though. Because, yeah, I know, but the thing let's is be like... Honest, we get every third-party title. Let's be honest. Almost every third-party title is bought mm-hmm. either by the connections from both of us when it comes to Ubisoft, EA, or IOP buys it and you just get it. Like yeah. it's just, yeah. But that that dreadful day when we break up, I have to I have to find I make sure I see what games I did. <laughs> um but uh okay. Other than that, so shout out to Wukong. Uh, it's coming out. Addict's going to well, probably be streaming that. You, you so you're going to stay up till midnight to play or is it come out at some 10, odd 10 ass PM, time? 10 p.m. 10 PM. Yeah. Wow. So, okay. Want to like state again, like the biggest reason that it doesn't matter who offers like a digital library with me, mm-hmm. I will never forget. There was a time where I just got laid off at Dish Network. I was just doing enough to, I had to just enough work to keep ends meet and I couldn't afford the, uh, the destiny for forsaken expansion. And I came home and it came out the next day and you bought it. And, like, to this day, like, it doesn't matter what happens. It's like, you know, because I, you gave Destiny money. No, damn well, you don't like yeah, the 10K. <laughs> I, I so don't think I, I like, touched you know, it either. Like, <laughs> you know, it's, and it's just like, at that point, I was like, nah. I was like, you know, because that, that, that's, that's some real French shit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all of it. I don't even think I played this shit either. <laughs> no, you, you, you did. You, you, you realistically only bought it because you know that that was like one yeah, of the, it was the like, highlights yeah, of my yeah. year. Oh man, which, and, and, yeah, what year was that? Was that the one like 2019, when twenty nineteen, twenty eighteen? Yeah, okay. and, and it's like I told you, like, I, once IOP started like getting bigger and bigger, and companies started taking it more and more serious, like you ain't really had to put any money towards gaming. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to ILP. Uh, those are you guys are doing it uh, big over there, and it's and I've been a beneficiary of it uh, by a virtue of being good friends with gaming addict. Um, what's uh, what else is uh, there? There was a, so a lot of things. The crazy thing is that this topic that this this pretty much the Indiana Jones episode. Um, it it cha- it would have changed. Like, say if we did this podcast a day ago or two days ago, we would have been. It would have been more so speculation. What game are they putting there, right? Um, because this is all starting no speculation at the end of the day. But I do think it's kind of known at this point. Like, yeah. Hold on, but before before we get into the topic, my bad. Because I was looking at something and it popped up on my uh, Twitter. Two things popped up on my X timeline that I thought was interesting. One was Insider Gaming posted Xbox is trying to relicense Deadpool and Marvel Ultimate Alliance is claimed. What do you think of that? I don't give a fuck. I I mean, I think that that's a really good thing to get. But as far as like me, because like here's the thing, like people always say, addict, you know, why are you saying this? Because because I I I game for me. Now I will speak from a perspective of someone that's more in the middle that doesn't really care. And I try to be there as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, that's why I usually give two takes. The 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 selfish addict take. Cuz that uh, my name is gaming addict and the person that covers the industry take. And, and the selfish addict does not give two shits about that game. What Deadpool or Marvel Ultimate Alliance are both. 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 Uh but I, I can understand how that's big titles to have in game pass Mm -hmm. like and we're not talking like oh we we get it for six months to a year no no activision published them suckers they would be there for uh for for a while at least for the licensing ran out again yeah yeah like again like because they i guess they want to put them out on the pc and xbox series consoles and um deadpool the crazy thing is i actually own deadpool physical copy i went out 
probably overpaid for a physical copy of it. It's in my living room. Um, and as far as Marvel Ultimate Alliance, I've look. I've been looking for it because I do. I would like to play those games. I think I would appreciate those games more now that I've you know grown at and my appetite has gotten uh, better uh, for certain uh, video games. So. If they were able to do that and get that, you know, obviously into Game Pass or if they want to sell, resell it or hell, put it, uh, give it like, you know, a friendly little remaster with a res boost and some FPS boost, I, I'd be extremely uh, on, on point with that. Um, the other thing that occurred was Ninja Theory <laughs> apparently made $23 million last year and that Hellblade 2 has been successful um yeah which is funny is like it sure did it make 23 million dollars yeah but did you see it was internal studios using its services so like what what does that mean does that mean like exchanging money from xbox point a to xbox point c like it's literally the same money like you're charging rare that's funded by microsoft to use ninja theory's uh equipment <laughs> And then no. literally, they're just going to be like exchanging money from one division to another. Like, no, you know what's crazy though. But that's actually how it is. That that makes sense. Like, you know, in the industry I work in, um, you know, parts of our business has to pay another part of the business for uh, proc and services, or like it, it just it's just balancing a check with. That's just how it works. That's that's funny that you say that. I I look at it like that, but. Um, I do want to read a, a portion a portion of these uh, so, letters. The one thing I will say, regardless of the money situations, it shows that Ninja Theory is most likely safe regardless because they are very essential to development of games at Microsoft. Yeah, that mocap. Yeah, they, they, they have more purposes than they got to. Obviously, they develop games, but they have, you know, they can be support, you know, for all the other studios in many different ways. Um so I'm about to read this. Don't know what any of this means, but it's from uh, it's uh, the business review strategic report for the year ended 30th of June 2023. So this is for OK. Wow. So because Hellblade would have been the next uh, year. So this is before Hellblade came out. So. It says during the financial year, Ninja Theory has continued to focus on the development of of the Mara, which we still have not been out yet, and Hellblade 2 projects. Hellblade 2 has now completed and was released on 21st of May 2024. Over the course of the year, Ninja Theory team have settled into highly productive rhythm of the game development, utilizing their office building as a creative hub for in-person collaborating while it's continuing to support work from home throughout hybrid working. Over the year, Ninja Theory has taken several opportunities to showcase Hellblade 2 in public to an excellent reception. The team are well-placed in the industry to continue building unique narrative-led narrative -led experiences with uh, very high production values, leading to products that have potential for both direct sales revenue and indirect revenue through game subscription services. The directors believe that the financial results are an accurate ref reflection of the performance of the company's during a year, principal risk, principal risk and uncertainties. The company principal financial asset comprised cash and intercommunity, <laughs> intercompany receivables arising directly from its operations. The main purpose of these financial assets is to fund the company's operations. The company's activities exposed to its several financial risks. The main risks arising from the company's financial operations are credit risk and liquidity. I, I think I don't know if I said that right. Directors review and agree uh, policies for managing each of these risks, and they are summarized below. These policies have remained unchanged from previous years. The two major risks that Ninja Theory is exposed to are hiring and access to markets. Hiring remains challenging, however, has been steady and is under review. Access to markets has remain largely unchanged being mitigated through our acquisitions by Microsoft as they are the main distributor of our products. Uh, financial key performance indicators. It says the, the directors consider turnover and operating expenses to be the company's key performance indicators. During the period, turnover was uh, what 24 
is that 24 million euros representing a 15.8 percent increase on a previous financial year uh this is a there is a direct result of the intercompany arrangements and is in line with business activity as we ramp up development on both our key projects. Operating expenses are managed by central team within Microsoft who set the operating expense budget allocations on an annual basis. This year operating expense has increased from 17 point, well, I guess 18 uh, million to 22 million an increase of 20%. This is in line with the agreed budget and director are sat directors are satisfied with that. This is reflective of the activities undertaken in a year. Uh, so and so and so and so. All right. So, um, yeah. Oh, in the future developments, it says following the successful release of Hellblade 2, Ninja Theory will now concentrate their efforts on various future projects. So Project Mara should be next. Now, shout out to Ninja Theory. It looks like they're safe. They're protected. They found ways to diversify their revenue. My dog is loud. I'm sorry for to the audience. I don't hear it. Oh, okay. The thing that I, I do want to mention about uh, Ninja Theory is that as of today, and I and we can as of today, Hellblade Two is still my game of the year. It's uh, as far as like. Of the games that I played, like my my two favorite, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll tell you this: my two favorite games this year were Banishers and Hellblade Two, and Hellblade Two edging out Banishers because uh, graphics, performance, story. Uh, I thought they did a tremendous job, and um, like I said, there's a couple games that are coming out that I think I'm I'm going to have a, a good time with. A couple of them are you know coming out from Ubisoft. Uh, Indiana Jones still has to come out. Um, and, um, I think that's all I'm really looking forward to. I know the life is strange too might be, inter uh, not life is strange too. It's like, it's, uh, the, the new life is strange game, um, looks promising as well, but, uh, yeah, man. Um, shout out to Ninja Theory. Uh, um, I didn't think they did these reports. I, they, yeah, these reports that I know they, they do them, they are internal, but I don't think, I don't know why this came out or. That these would still come out with them being within, you know, you know, a, a first party studio within, you know, uh, Microsoft. But I guess uh, uh, they, this is something to be proud of. It's funny because all this is from 2023 and they didn't put out anything, you know. <laughs> so um, that must be really just operating, operating expenses, whatever they can uh, charge for. Um, so those were the two things that kind of uh, crossed my uh, came across my timeline that I thought was interesting was them uh, Microsoft trying to renew the license for Deadpool and Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which I think they should go ahead and do. And that Ninja Theory is making money over there at Xbox. So that means even with the release of Hellblade, that shit could sell, you know, less than a million, you know, less actually 200,000. And they probably still show that they made uh some decent uh uh some decent money um so now let's talk about let's talk about um the situation going on with xbox and their multi-platform strategies this led to like i said i was on you know I ilp uh yesterday and had a, a little debate with uh, uh king um and then earlier in the, this all started, I want to say, like last week, Shinobi uh, said a big game's coming to PlayStation, a big Xbox game coming to PlayStation. I think that's what started it. And then somebody, I think a Spanish account posted a picture of like something that said Viva La something, which indicated Mexico. And so people first indicated was like, oh, it's Forza Horizon 5. And I think we had a conversation. I don't know if it was on your stream or on a podcast, but I feel like we had a conversation about this, um, if it was Forza. Um, and then now, Jez came out, and he was doing his investigation. I think you found this. And he says he thinks it's Indiana Jones, but he's still investigating. And then good old Nate the Hate, the one that started this whole problem, which he's solely responsible for getting for this whole business update, just comes out and says... Indiana Jones. He's not responsible for something. He just jump started it sooner than it was going to come out. 
Yeah, but we that's... can't we can't act like he's the center of attention. He just telling us what happened. But so he comes out again and just kind of just says bluntly. Actually, I think I have the uh, uh, where's the where's the tweet. He comes out really bluntly and just kind of rips the bandaid off. Um, wait, why does it say? Hold on, Twitter is is Twitter giving out misinformation? It says Indiana Jones PS Five release confirmed. Why is Twitter saying that? They nobody's confirmed it. Only. All right, whatever. Just just keep going. All right, because now because that gets it, get, it irritates me. So Nate the Hate says Machine Games Indiana Jones in their Great Circle were released on Xbox and PC this holiday, quote December, as a timed console exclusive. After this timed exclusive window expires, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is planned to come to PlayStation Five in the first half of 2025. Your dude, uh, Dirk Grigody, also said something like this too. What? Uh, saying that he's hearing Indiana Jones is going to be a timed exclusive and a short timed exclusive. Yeah, three three months. Uh, it's but that 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 info has been out there for a while. Just yeah. people wasn't paying attention to it. It's like I said, people sit there and all you know don't believe rumors until Xbox says it. Then flip the fuck out when Xbox hasn't even said it. It's <laughs> like look, like it's like the Starfield thing. Until the ship goes down. I'm 100% telling people Starfield coming. Because the same people that are saying yeah. that Indiana Jones is coming three months later and it's looking like it's true are the same people that said Starfield was coming. Just because Microsoft came out there and said, what, once again, they said Starfield and Indiana Jones wasn't one of those four, which it wasn't. It was the fifth one, apparently. Doesn't mean the games aren't coming. <laughs> so I, I, I anticipate Starfield to come after. How many expansions is there? You think Starfield's going to have like two or three? Probably just one. No, I think they're big. No, because they just uh, greenlit another one. Uh, okay. I forgot the name. Now, all right, Starfield. All right, here's the thing, right? I will. Res- I, I will. Uh, Star- all right, if Starfield's got to go, it got to go. Whatever, right? But only do that shit after both the expansions are out. <laughs> like, not like do that shit after the expansions are out. So after Shattered Dreams, nope, don't not Why yet. Why does Starfield and Indiana Jones are announced coming to PlayStation? This uh, game's called. Um, I the thing is, I I it would be annoying, right? I in my video I'm I'm we'll lose your shit. Let's I, 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 I would, but but it has to stop. The thing is, is that here's the problem, right? How many times are we gonna keep going through the cycle? Right? Cause you gotta think about Xbox has a stretch of a great stretch of good games that are coming that are gonna go through that same cycle. You know, and what props, why is Indiana Jones a time exclusive and why not Doom is it? Why isn't Doom a time exclusive? I don't know. Cause it, once again, they they See, are. If, if they did that, if they were consistent with their shit, right? If Doom: The Dark Age was announced as a, as a t- just announced as an Xbox exclusive, and then we just kind of know was a timed exclusive, I would respect. I was like, all right, I can go through knowing that every game they come out, it's probably going to come out first on Xbox, and then some months uh, months down the line, it's going to come on PlayStation. It is what it is, you know. If, if I if, if actually if I was them, the smart thing to do. Because most games that sell, they sell their, they're going to sell their most in the first three months that they're available, right? Everything would, to, I would make, all right, a three or six months to a year. Like Activision, Bethesda games, three months to six months. Xbox first party games, a year plus, depending on how I feel, right? But Xbox is so damn inconsistent. And, Again, I, people don't like the comment. It's just like Microsoft is literally Ubisoft with a console. They're Embracer Group with a console. Like they make better decision, decisions than Embracer Group. I think they have better purchases than Embracer Group, and they had smarter releases of studios than Embracer Group because Embracer Group will buy a studio and three months later, like have to get rid of them or offload them. Um, but the thing is, Here, go ahead. Here's how I want to do it. Yep. You know, I just said it. In my video I just made is 
there's a couple scenarios I feel is, is possible. Um, first off, they got to be transparent, whatever they're doing. I don't care what it is. Just come out there and be transparent. If everything's going, everything's going. The problem is, is you are being inconsistent on how you're handling these IPs. Yeah. So when one happens, instead of us talking about the game, you know, if they would have just been honest with Blade and say, yo, everything's coming, we wouldn't be talking about Indiana Jones right now in yeah. this way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sure, is that good? No. Is that bad? No. It's debatable. We don't know. No one in the industry has ever done anything like this. Uh, two, I believe the core Xbox studios all need to stay exclusive. They do. The playground games, the rare, the state of uh, decay. Uh, I think when it comes to Bethesda, you can make the multi-plat, but key, key components at least time. Elder Scrolls. Uh, Fallout. Keep those games exclusive to your platform for a certain amount of time. I would like a year. That's my opinion. Because mm -hmm. I don't think three and six months is worth it. Yeah. Uh, and then you can make everything multiplied on the other one. So that that that's fine. Uh, that that is the biggest issue I have. And it's like, and if and if you're going to make everything come over eventually, like Halo and stuff. Mm -hmm. You just need to be open with it now because when that Halo is announced, if it ever does come, it's going to be bad. And to me, mm -hmm. if you're trying, if they came out tomorrow smooth and say, look, we're moving more towards a, a, a multi-platform approach, but what we're going to do is every game Xbox makes besides Call of Duty is a, is a year exclusivity on Xbox. You will never have to worry about it going anywhere else for that year. <laughs> then I feel like people would accept it a little bit more. But they said, oh, you know, not that game. but well, maybe that game. Oh, that game, I don't know. Go left. No, not you. You go right. Like, you're not being transparent. So constantly all you see in the news is speculation. Speculation this, speculation that. And it's not good. It's not a good look. No, not at all. It's horrible, actually. And and, and from a hardcore perspective, perspective uh it, it, it's bad um because i think at the end i think outside of us i guess at the end it's not that big of a deal but like it's it, it sucks when you, you got other publishers that are skipping your platform and you're now helping your biggest competitor cannibalize you because it's like you're not adding value to your platform and um i, I feel like all right so what is what is like even if you're gonna do this you there's just you there's still gotta be a perk or a reason like hey you should still prioritize like hey we gotta get them to still buy xbox our games are available everywhere but we want you to play on xbox show me you want me to play your shit on xbox because game pass game pass is the game answer. pass isn't a reason it's, it's not, it's not reason. really I'm a sorry. reason yeah it's not just because you could save money on a platform does not mean it's a reason to own the platform. It's a good incentive to own the platform, and it's a good reason to buy the platform. But what does it always come down to, Smooth? Games. Yeah. Fucking Netflix was $7 a month for years. Value like like crazy. What brought people to Netflix, Smooth? Those old Netflix originals. The content. Those movies, the content. Yeah, they got some. Hey, man. And again, like you know, what's crazy, and I, and I said this a couple of times: the decisions that Microsoft is doing with their, their multi-platform strategy is actually more appropriate for PlayStation because PlayStation is actually running out of people to sell to. So it actually makes sense if they did it, and, and, and that's not me saying like, oh, like you know what I mean? Because like I feel like Microsoft, like you keep going in all these directions, but you're not mastering any of them. You're getting a little bit here, a little bit there. You got to have one dominant, and you're not dominating the one where, that birth all this stuff, and that's your console. So, I'm I'm like, I, I wish like if like w one thing that would make this all like easy, if I just wish PlayStation 
had took some select games and say, I, you know what, we we can do this. Give us Spider Man 2018. Give us Hell Divers. Give us freaking the shitty game Concord. You know what I mean? Like, do like it makes. I, I, then it would be if PlayStation did that. I guarantee you, everything kind of like becomes okay. But PlayStation ain't gonna do that. They ain't gonna do that until Xbox is not in a position where they have to do it. But ne- but I don't even think Xbox is in a position where they have to do it. Because I don't think Xbox is in a position. I feel like Xbox, by them doing it, I feel like it, it hurts them. You know why they're in a position where they have to do it now? Because they spent $60 billion on a corporation. Yeah. And I understand. And I understand that it makes. It makes sense. I understand, right? Because Activision made all this money selling this games. On everything, you know, I understand the concept. I understand it makes it the does Acolyte make sense. was canceled by Disney Plus. The what? The Acolyte was canceled by Disney Plus. What is that? The Star Wars show that people were shitting on. Oh, okay, okay. That was oh, okay. After one season, yeah, yeah. People were, yeah, yeah people were going ham on that one. Um. Yeah, dude, like I think it's going to be um Yeah, they, and I understand, I do understand they have to sell I understand that no none of their studios will make would be able to make money or Xbox wouldn't be able to make money if they produce all the games that they're about to produce and they were exclusively on Xbox and Game Pass. I know, I know I, you're going to disagree with this. Well, go ahead. But I wish they would just abandon Game Pass. I feel like Game Pass isn't helping them. I think for Game Pass was they put into place at a time where they weren't generating enough content, so it was easier to sell them on value, not necessarily the content of the games themselves. Mm. But I feel like we've gotten to the point where they generate more than enough content to make a, a platform competitive. And if they don't get rid of Game Pass, you put it in there like a year later. Uh, cause to me, you could still use game pass, but the, the day and date's the issue, the day. And, and they've essentially pretty much said day and date's the issue when they redid the, the tiers, they made the baseball not even have day and date in it. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, you either give me 20 bucks or you don't get shit <laughs> on, 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 on Xbox. <laughs> so it's just like, it, it, if, if she's screaming from the top of the rooftops that, you know, this ain't going to work and you're still you know, trying to keep it in there. Do I love Game Pass? Yeah. But at the same time, it's just like, we got to be realistic with the situation at this point. Like, uh, I think Game Pass has been around long enough and it has enough subscribers where it trained, it conditioned people, right? A certain it way. It did. It definitely conditioned so people. To like but I wouldn't say it ever... It, that like, would, like, I probably... I probably walk away from Xbox if they abandon some shit like that because now because everything is going up, everything is going up, everything is expensive now, and gaming is relatively expensive. And and I feel I, you on that, but do you care more about the games that they're making or the services that's providing the games? Because I feel like all this Game Pass is the center, all of this issue. Game Pass the center. And to me, if it, you know, and obviously it, it's not even going to, you know, it doesn't mean that they do it. It's going to fix their issues. But I do think it, it'll fix a lot of their issues. I truly believe that. It does fix a lot of their issues. Um. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I would uh, agree with that. Because the thing is, I think the game that they, they got some good games coming. And so the games aren't a problem. The, the biggest issue we have really with Microsoft now, a couple of issues we have with Microsoft now is their release cadence because they haven't been hitting their release cadence and that they won't make a thing exclusive to Xbox and they won't and, and, and market. It, but here's the thing. Why won't they make it to exclusive? Let's, let's be honest. Let's break it down. Why does it make... Why do they want to sell on other platforms? What are the reasons that you think would be uh, at the center of them insisting on not selling on other platforms? Well, yeah, because they're not going to make enough on the return by just. Why by would they not make enough on the return? Because uh, they're 
people are going to play it through Game Pass or there's not enough people that will be available to buy these games on Xbox by itself. So if if you if you know that's the issue, then why can't eliminating that issue be part of the solution? Your camera just it, did some Call of Duty stuff. Is that purposely or, or is it just glitching out? Just see, my thing is like, okay. if that's the issue and we can fix it, you know, are yeah, they going to do it? Probably not. But yeah. I think we can agree that that's the issue. That's, like, that's you, okay, here's the thing. You got to put your personal, I want to save money aside. What is, do you personally believe is better for the Xbox ecosystem entirely? Think about it, though. All right, let me ask you this question. Because it kind of, if there's no Game Pass, right, does Xbox still have the same amount of units sold? Yes. So I, I would actually, would... I would actually say that when you take the symptoms of Game Pass, because I don't think you need to get rid of Game Pass entirely. I don't believe that. Uh, I think you know that twenty dollar tier. Just make that one tier, or you know they have the EA Play thing. Take day and date out entirely, and just have it one tier. And start going back to Arche- uh whatever they call that, uh, when you sell stuff individually. Uh, a la carte. Because to me, yeah, a la carte. Because to me, that's the issue here. The reason they're going multi-plat is because they put a service out that is cannibalizing their own sales. So when they're not making the money off the sales, and the, the, subscrip- the subscriber growth isn't what they want to make that difference, the only other option they have is to to expand to other platforms. That's just my opinion on it. Now I know you disagree to uh, to a point. I know that, and, and that's fine. You 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 can disagree. Uh, here's the thing. I smooth. disagree because I think that's a stupid take. Not not that. Okay, then, then tell me why it's stupid then. It's because you're telling me that saving. All right, so Game Pass. All right, you admit Game Pass is is a good service, right? There's nothing wrong with the service itself. It puts it, it's pretty much it's it's our Netflix essentially, but for games. That's that's how, that's the only way I can put it. We pay our subscription. We look forward to games coming through, right? How does not having Game Pass fix them making exclusives. Because if they if they knew that they could sell more exclusives on their homegrown consoles, they would. I guarantee you, if if if, if Starfield wasn't on, because here's the thing, I don't think they should eliminate the PC. They've already nurtured that to a degree. It's no going back to that. Look how much Starfield sold on PC. Now it probably wouldn't have sold to that degree on Xbox. But I guarantee you, it would have sold probably double or triple more. Did you pay for Starfield? <laughs> no. Do you no. know anyone that paid for Starfield? That bought it? Like actually? Yes. Yeah, people on. Um, I don't. You know. I don't know one person that paid for Starfield. You don't know anybody on Steam? Like I can go to just my Steam playlist and. No, I'm no, I'm talking about on Xbox. Oh no, on Xbox, no. No. Guess what, Smooth? The Steam people have access to Game Pass and still chose to buy it on Steam. Okay, so that means okay. So I don't get it. What's the problem? The the point is is that's the reason. You have one ecosystem that's not bringing in the return. Now normally the way that they initially thought that they would offset that that difference was Game Pass, the growth of Game Pass, get 50 million plus. The problem is they're not growing anymore. And the reason they're not growing no more is because they're telling everyone and their mom to not buy an Xbox. Like, it's literally, I don't understand. Maybe I'm stupid. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But when I sit here and I look at Xbox literally telling us not to buy their console, and then I see the Game Pass numbers die out and, and just straight flatline, I feel like there's a connection. Would you not agree? <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, all right, so... 
Your argument, I understand that argument. The Game Pass has to grow because it can't grow unless they sell consoles. They stopped selling consoles. That's why Game Pass stopped growing. That they could have had all those fifty if they pushed X. If they would, I would have rather. This is what Xbox really should have done. <laughs> I would have rather them did a pack in uh, Starfield with every Xbox or some shit like that at the time that they came See, out. See that that they should do, and I'll, I'll throw you another one. If they were to take a Game Pass being the 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 core thing that they needed, the core thing that they needed was to Game Pass to be where it should be. You know what they should be doing? They should be pushing Xbox at every point they can. Yeah. Oh, you know we're working on uh, the the uh, the the Xbox One and PS4 versions. Scrap those. We wanted to upgrade to the next Xboxes. Yeah. Dude, because you're literally allowing people to stay on previous generation shit. Now, how long has the Xbox Series consoles been out smooth? What, what, four fucking years? Four, four years, yeah. yeah. So you're still catering to an audience that's not buying shit. Like, how so, many people you think would upgrade? Now, imagine this smooth. Put, 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 a, put, a, put a cap on. Fucking tin foil time, man. Imagine if... They were like, we're going to get a, a Call of Duty on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series S and X. We're dropping last-gen support. We're putting day and date Game Pass on that sucker. How many people you think that's on previous gen that play Call of Duty? He was like, oh, you mean I can buy an Xbox, leave the damn store, and own the game and play the game when I get the fuck home? How many people you think's upgrading smooth to an Xbox, not to a PlayStation? Yeah, I mean, uh, for a company yeah. that does nothing but five to ten year spreadsheets, this is real one year type of energy. <laughs> oh man, uh, don't tell me is that Mountain Dew? Yes, Baja I'm Blast. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah, dude. Um, I can't match that energy. Um. But I will you know say, I'm right. Let's be honest. You know I'm right. You're right to if a degree. To, to a degree. Yes. Okay. There, I mean, there, I'll take it. Two things can be right. Um, the thing is, all right. So the the biggest issue, yeah, they they have to grow Game Pass. Um, the exclusive thing again is 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 a problem. It shouldn't be, but that's just where we're at. Um, how? My thing is though. Were they planning to announce this shit at Gamescom, though? I don't know. Um, maybe it's one of those things where they announce the release date, and then you just see PlayStation announce it on the tour. Oh, that shit's coming to us, too, this day. <laughs> or yeah, maybe this why? is one of those why? things that was that was leaked early, mm. and people were just assuming it was going to be this week. Yeah. You know, maybe two things can be right, because Forza Horizon is also on the... Games or maybe Horizon is the one that gets announced this week, and not yeah. Indiana Jones. And they're both just confirmed. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Um, I miss the old Xbox. I miss, I, miss the, I miss the Xbox One Xbox. I prefer 2013 Xbox, dude. They had a vision. They had a vision. They had games and they had a vision. I, I and it's like I said, I don't. Xbox. I don't want people to assume that. Oh, Ed, I think he knows everything. He knows how to. Run. I don't know how to run a trillion dollar company. Mm -hmm. I don't. But at the same time, when I'm looking at a company that has abandoned Mixer, abandoned the Windows Phone, abandoned what the hell was that shit called Zoom, the, mm, the Zoom. Uh, abandoned all these companies. Why is other people gonna say they don't know how to run their own self? Like, like, look, I'm not saying that they don't have smart people up there. I think they have too many tunnel vision, echo chamber motherfuckers that don't, that aren't in tone with what's actually going on. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that all these studios that I know for a fact what they're doing is wrong because I'm not that guy. I don't know what they're doing is right or wrong. For all we know, they're la they're laying the ground floor for like two or three years from now. They're the biggest gaming conglomerate that's ever existed in gaming. Or they're laying the ground floor for their fucking funeral. Yeah, man. 
Oh, my goodness. Ah, man. So what, like, like, I, I, I don't understand. So game opening night, is it tomorrow? Yes. Is it at night or in the morning? Um, 2 p.m. Eastern. Fuck. Ah, I, I should have delayed. I should have gave myself another day off. I should have gave myself another day off of work. Oh, man. That sucks. Okay. I'm curious. There, I, I will say this. So Indiana Jones, is coming, I still think December is a stupid date. I was hoping to get pushed up. Um, like I yeah, really, December is a very interesting day. Because, uh, so with this news, this means Xbox has no more big games left. Until December. No. Happens, no, until, in, until freaking Avow, until February. <laughs> For now. And, and <laughs> like, <sighs> yeah, once they do a montage showing a bunch of Xbox games going to PlayStation games, <laughs> it's like Starfield, that's going, brother. <laughs> Avowed, we'll wait till next year, but you'll hear that about that more. Hellblade 2, come on up, Satsuna. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, I would, I wouldn't, you know what, I really want. I really want to sit down in a call, um, a, a podcast, maybe Attic, maybe you can make it happen, with a bunch of our core Xbox fans, people that we used to communicate with, people. Right, that I've are been blacklisted by all the people. They ain't going to get I, 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 I'm calling, I'm, I'm sitting down a, a bat signal to every X because I want to talk to like. So, no, let's start calling names. So who would you want to be in this? I, no, Avengers, I, every, Xbox podcast. everybody, anybody possible. I, I, obviously, I want. So do, do you want me to Cole, try to set this up for? Yeah, uh, for I, I'll IOP. take Cole Eastwood. I feel like a lot of these people would come ran, on. Ran uh, freaking what's the 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 the, uh, uh, the dude, uh, freaking university, um, uh, like Plum Network. Plume, I want anybody uh, like it, people that like because the thing is is that in one side of the community they're pivoting they're pivoted to whatever Microsoft is pivoting to where they now enjoy that these games are being so you want a giant about. civil war I want yeah I want like a discussion I want a real discussion that's like come on let's be honest man like as an Xbox fan how do you feel and do you think this is good for the brand do you think this is good for the future of Xbox what does this mean for us as the gamer, as the Xbox gamer, it's that still is actively involved in this thing called the console war. I still have a PlayStation sitting on sitting on a shelf. It's collecting dust. Like for, my shit don't even connect to the internet no more. I don't even know why. I haven't bothered to figure out why. But um, it, it's, it's just all these factors, dude. What is Xbox? What is Xbox? I, I need to know. I like I, I really want I really want to get in a podcast or a discussion with every prominent Xbox content creator uh that I know um and, and, and see what's up. And really see what's up. Call that. Say that again? What would we call that? Um Hmm. Surviving Xbox. Uh, that's what I would call it. Surviving Xbox. We got. We got to get this. You got to get this done because I don't know. And a lot. And the thing is, I don't want people to think. You know, this is the third podcast in a row with us like complaining or something like that. But like, you know, I, I took a look at the chat and I help people think I'm the, I'm doom and gloom. I'm not. I don't believe I'm doom and gloom. I'm still through and through. Xbox. I like I. I I've been, it from someone that's been back and forth with that that community. Yeah, there's st- there used to be ninety to ten. Now it's like 50, 50. <laughs> You know, people coming to my side, man. The mustard heart army is growing by the damn day. <laughs> oh man, I just think, man, like I'm not. I'm not a grifter. I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to engagement farm. I don't engage. I don't make memes or any of that stuff. I really don't. Um, 
just when I tweet, sometimes I just tweet whatever's on my mind after whatever rumor I've read or whatever announcement I met. And then whatever happens, half that I don't do anything to engage in fire. I don't do anything to make other people upset. But the thing is, it's like, why should, as an Xbox fan, I should have to accept this? I'm, a lot of these people that's coming at me used to be in the trenches with me, arguing with PlayStation fanboys saying, yo, our games are better than yours. You know, we had better, like, exclusive at this point in time. Like, you know what I mean? Why, like, my thing is, why is this good? Why should I want Xbox to keep releasing more games on PlayStation? Why? Why would I want that? Why, Like, why as an Xbox fan would I really want... The, the reason why I'm watching an Xbox game showcase is to see what co is coming brand new to Xbox, Xbox Game Pass. When I watch PlayStation showcase, I don't watch it to see what's coming to Xbox. I was like... What sucks? What looks interesting for PlayStation or what sucks coming to PlayStation? Like, why would I want the bit Xbox biggest punch to come? What if then? All right, for example, bro, think about this. Think about this. Right now, as of today, what's the most anticipated game you think for Xbox is from Xbox First Party? Fable. Fable. All right. That's their biggest punch, right? Why would I want that? To be a potential to go to PlayStation. Why? And what's Why? funny is I don't think I don't think right now people are expecting Fable to be there anytime soon. But you let these motherfuckers drop a gears. Even an anniversary or or a Forza. See how quick it goes from Fable looks good to I'll just wait for it to come on PlayStation. Yeah. Xbox when Xbox really needs to do though. They really want what Xbox really need to do. They really need to sell the Xbox Series S for ninety nine dollars and the Series X for um, two ninety nine, and just like, hey, let's see if they really don't want it, and let that be it. Tell them she's out of law. Sell as many as you can. It is what it is. You know, I guess we can go ahead and. Uh... Yeah, yeah I, I don't think, you know, we're just going to keep going in circles at this point. Look, we don't agree with a lot of the, the business practices that are making. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I, I don't even think smooth. Uh, you know, we might feel highly about it, uh, but I will say I don't know if they're doing the right or wrong. But I know is off of covering this industry since 2014 and seriously covering since 17. Mm -hmm. I've never seen the industry like this. Um, I do think this is worse than the Xbox One generation. And it's by by the sales wise, they're falling behind the Xbox One generation. Yeah. So it is what it is. It might work out for them. Only time will tell. Yeah, only time will tell. And <clears throat> we will be there. Uh Attic, you're probably gonna have some immediate reactions to Gamescom. I probably won't have any sort of thing available to talk about until later in the day. I'll probably put out a video about like seven or eight o'clock tomorrow because I'm going to spend, as soon as I get off of work, I'm going to spend the last uh, few hours trying to catch it, catching up. So I might have videos later in the day um, unless I like sneak away and watch it on like a lunch break or whatever. But um, looking forward to it, man. Please uh, thank you guys for coming in, checking out Play Xbox. Always continuing to check out Weapon Will, being subscribed to the Patreon. We definitely uh, thank you guys and uh, uh, thank you guys for rocking with us. I will be bringing back questions. Uh, I'll be getting, I'll, will that should be back in the Patreon probably for next week's episode. We'll have the Patreon questions posted on. Um, well, the reason that we took some time for this one and we didn't do it a couple of days ago is because we knew the closer we get to Gamescom, which we'll probably do like in our, tomorrow, we'll do another um, like emergency plan at Xbox. Mm -hmm. uh, so you guys are probably going to get two podcasts this week because. I don't think we we can logically wait a whole week to talk about. Oh games no 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 yeah so. yeah we'll, we'll probably definitely fit in another episode um uh this week for sure. And that um, might go live immediately depending on how BG wants to handle it. What is this thing though? Like there's there's one thing I wanted to ask you. Um, somebody said something like, "Oh, X, everybody's gonna want an Xbox after Gamescom." What the hell? Are, are, like. It's not like a, like I don't understand what could they be holding off to Gamescom. We already know all the games I they're gonna no show. Clue. Let's say finally gonna no give clue. us release dates. All right, one one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Dragon Age has its release date October thirty first, 
right? So Avowed, I think, could have survived a November 12th release date, right? But now, when does Starfield Shattered Dreams come out then? Shattered Space. Mm-hmm. Would, I don't know. Okay. We'll find out tomorrow. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, if you look at the their website, like it is there. Like it's one of the games. So okay. it's going to be there. Uh, maybe next month. All right. We'll see. All right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning. If you're on the side of the globe, we are out of here. Peace. Peace.